Today on Technically Speaking, we'll be looking at Jim's take on the debt ceiling resolution, the wave of economic data that's coming out next week, and we'll wrap up with Europe. Stay tuned. And joining me now is Jim Wyckoff. Jim, how are you? Good morning, Alex. Good to see you. All right, Jim, so let's get started with the debt ceiling resolution. Now, I see you use uh, Band-Aid a lot in your reports uh, the last couple of days. Is, is that really what it is? I mean, just some patchwork right now to, get, uh, to move it forward to January and get a more concrete resolution? Yes, Alex, Alex indeed, it was an interesting week. Uh, when we got the uh, uh, debt and budget agreement late Wednesday, uh, the marketplace... Uh, kind of reacted with a uh, uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact, or as in gold, a uh, uh, sell the rumor, buy the fact. And uh, the outcome was expected. It was frustrating for everybody here in the U.S. But indeed, it really just postpones a, a, a the bigger issue that has to be addressed of uh, a long-term solution to agreement on a U.S. budget and the debt ceiling. And that's just really been pushed back about three months to the first quarter of 2014. So what the uh, the marketplace uh, did was uh, once this agreement was reached, they they finally focused on and realized that we still have serious problems here. Uh, the gold market saw some safe haven demand. The U.S. dollar plummeted. Uh, against the foreign currencies, and that also gave some support for the gold market and other precious metals. So we really have some uh, serious issues that just have been pushed a little bit farther down the road, and uh, you're seeing some safe haven demand for gold, also evidenced uh, by higher U.S. Treasury bond and Treasury note futures prices. Uh, that also is, a, is a, an indication of the investor anxiety that is still in the marketplace. Uh, yeah, you did mention that uh, that gold did go up. There was a huge rise on Thursday. Now, depending on who you speak to, a lot of analysts say that the rise in gold price was due to a Chinese credit agency cutting the U.S. credit rating. Uh, you also have Fitch, of course, that threatened earlier in the week. And then there's the S&P in 2011 that uh, downgraded the U.S. right after that resolution. Uh, what was your take on yesterday's big rise? Well, Alex, I think there was a combination of factors that... Uh spike the gold prices higher yesterday. Uh, I think you saw heavy short covering uh, when uh, when those traders who were short realized that their bets were wrong, that the gold market would sell off sharply if we got an agreement. So they had to scramble to cover their short positions. Uh, you know, the weaker dollar index also provided support. I think the Chinese credit agency that, that lowered the U.S. debt rating. I think that was one element among many that uh, put some uh, upside pressure on uh, safe haven assets but and, and some downside pressure on the dollar. Uh, uh, I think that uh, the Chinese rating news, I, I don't think it was a major element, but it was certainly a factor. Of course, with the government shut down for three weeks, economic data was not coming out the way it usually does, which brings us to a slew of it coming out next week. What, what do you expect uh, gold to do? What do you expect from these reports when, uh, when they start flooding uh, the market next week? Well, I think that gold and many other markets are going to get some fresh data that they've been waiting for. So I think you could see some higher volatility. Next Tuesday is the U.S. jobs report, so that's going to be an important day. So, yeah, I think you're going to see some increased volatility. Some reports will probably be canceled. And, and as we uh, progress today on Friday and, and early next week, we'll get a better idea of just when some of these other reports are coming out and what reports will be postponed or, or completely uh, eliminated. Of course, with all the, uh, the government shutdown and all the news coming out of the U.S., there hasn't been much room for headlines from Europe. Uh, they're still there. They're still having trouble. What do you see coming out of uh, the European markets uh, in the coming months? Alex, it would not surprise me in the coming weeks or a few months to see the European Union and its financial uh, situation move back into almost a crisis mode. Uh, just today, it was reported that uh, Spanish uh, bank loans are at their highest non-performing rate uh, in quite some time. So, 
the focus of the marketplace has been on the U.S. and its problems, but it's not going to surprise me to see the European Union come back into focus at some point. Now, there have been some better economic reports coming out of the European Union that some of the uh, pundits have been focusing upon, but I, I would certainly not call that strong enough economic data to suggest that it would overcome the financial problems and the banking problems that are deeply embedded in the European Union's uh, system and, and probably are going to come to the uh, uh, surface again at some point. All right, Jim, let's bring it home with uh, your Wyckoff market ratings for gold and silver. Well, let's go with some support and resistance levels. First, Alex, I'm going to give December Comex gold resistance at uh, 1353.80. That's uh, one of the reaction highs in this uh, recent downtrend. Uh, solid support at this week's low of 1251. And I'm giving it a, a gold, a Wyckoff market rating of 4.5. That's a significant improvement from recently, but still slightly tilted. Uh, in the bearish camp. However, if we do see some upside price action here in gold, uh, you know, late Friday or early on Monday or Tuesday, then I think you're going to see that white cost market rating move into the uh, bullish side of the equation. Now for December silver, we've got uh, solid support at the, this week's low of 2049.5. Got solid resistance at the recent high of uh, 2252.5. And I'm giving silver also a white cost market rating of four four point five, which is you know gold and silver are, are in roughly the same near term technical postures. All right, good stuff, Jim. Have a nice weekend. And wait till next time, Alex. Bye bye. And thank you for watching this edition of Technically Speaking. If you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to send them to newsfeedback at kiko.com, or you can follow me on Twitter at alex underscore Have a good weekend.